Hello and welcome to this tutorial. What we're going to do today is we are going to look at the free web app Photopea. Now one of the things that we've been doing is looking at old photographs. We got them down from the loft and we started looking you know with the kids and going through bringing up those memories sharing them telling the stories but one thing that occurred to us that we don't see much more of anymore is that series of pictures where we couldn't get everything quite right maybe you know the faces just didn't look correct so we had to take more and more and more in order to try and get that so let's just take a wee look at how we can use Photopea which is a to, to combine two of these images to get the best image. So let's take a look at the pictures that we're looking at. Here are the ones, uh, the ones that we were looking at here. These pictures must be like 35 years old, I think. But look here, we can see, I don't think there's any picture where we're both looking the right way on love in the face on this one here. That's fantastic. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll look at combining the face on this one, or maybe this one, and this one here. Okay. Now this paper texture is in here. That will come apparent why I'm going to use this. We're going to use something called a layer masks tool. So first of all, to get started, let's look at the face that we want to take. So it's this one here because this is a nice, happy, smiling face here that we've got, and I want to stick it onto that face there. So what we have to do is just remove that. So let's just click and drag into our photo P. Okay. Now to get to photo P, you can just uh, Google photo P or just go to photo P.com just up in the URL there. All right. So let's take a wee look at this. Okay. So what we need to do is essentially we need to raise everything but this face here, okay? Now most people will be jumping to the eraser tool or, or something similar, and Photobee has a wonderful little tool called layer masks within here. Uh, let me just demonstrate this just by, I'm gonna pull in this paper texture. Again, I'm just clicking and dragging that, and just dropping that on there. I'll just resize that. There we go. And I'll just click on the tick. That's it. Now it's covered up. Um, it's covered up our uh, our layer here. So what I need to do is I need to arrange my layer. And you can think of this as just like um, papers on top of your desk. You know, if you put the paper texture on top, you're not going to see the image um, underneath it. So I'm just going to click and drag. This one to the bottom. There we go. We can see the layer that's currently called background was is now on top of the paper texture. In fact, you know what? I'm going to double click that and I'm going to rename that. Okay. Now, what we're going to use is these layer masks. Layer masks allow us to essentially paint out the background. So if I'm making sure that I've got my dotted line around this layer, if you don't, just click on it. And I'm going to move all the way down to the bottom here until I see this symbol here. If I hover over it, it says, um, it says add raster mask here. Okay, and I'm just gonna click on that. You'll now notice I have this white box here. Now the white box is our layer mask. And what we can do is we can paint on that box with black and white. Although we can't see it just now, Okay, um, it is there, we have it selected because we can see our dotted line around about it. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to select my brush tool here. It's already selected. You can see the, the, the circle there. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure that I've got black. Now I think with Photopea the default is red. It's a kind of bright red colour like that. And what I want to do is kind of drag that right down into that corner to get a black colour. Now what happens if I start to paint? You can see there that that paper texture starts to come through. Okay. And we can now see that we've got black on our layer mask. Now what that's doing is it's erasing the image. It's erasing parts of this layer. But unlike the eraser tool, we can go over and select white. 
I'm going to click here, swap colors, and I can just paint that back in. So it's really good for, um, particularly if you're, if you're new to this, you know, if you make a mistake, you can just go back in and paint over that mistake. You can see the We've now got a, a white box there because we've painted it all in. So what we're going to do is, I'm just going to turn off this, this texture layer here. I am going to use this brush here to paint out everything here and get rid of this background here. Now you'll see this black and white checks are coming through. That just means that there's no background just now. Some people prefer to work with the pave, you know, the a background on it. Some people find that easier. And we're just going to go and we're going to keep getting rid of everything here. And I'm just kind of going loosely in around about the head just now. And again, don't worry if you're clicking and doing this and you drag over the face, because all we have to do is just go back over swap colors and I can just paint that little bit back in with my brush tool here there we go switching back over to black super okay so now this is where things get interesting now I'm going to zoom in here and what I need to do to do that is I'm going to hold down alt and I'm going to use my mouse wheel to scroll in Okay, and I'm going to start painting in. Now we want to start using a smaller brush and I can access that at the top left hand side here and I can just bring this down. Now the hardness of your brush needs to be about kind of 34% is a good, a good size for it. It's basically what we call feathering. Let me see if I put my hardness right up. You can see there's like a really sharp line there, okay? Whereas compared to this one, it's kind of softer, it blends it in better. So we need to select our hardness and just bring that down to like kind of 35%. Something like that will do. You can play about with it. And let's just start going it. There we go. And I'm just going to get right in about there. Just getting as best as you can. Again, just the scroll wheel to go up and down. There we go. If you just want to get right in there. Ah, oh, this is super. That's looking good. So if you're wondering who the two wee boys are, yep, this is me. I'm so pleased my mother took these out and decided to uh, send them to the entire family WhatsApp group chat. <laughs> we had a lot of fun with it, to be fair. It's been good fun. Get those images out. And give them a wee edit. There we go, that is looking pretty good there. I think that'll do us for just now. So let's just scroll out again. There we are. We've got our head removed. Um, do you know what? Maybe just take out those blue collars as well. Again, it does matter. I can always put them in later on. By switching back over to the white. Super. Okay. Now what I want to do is I now want to bring in the other background. So I think I said it was this one here, didn't we? It's S and J2. So let's just bring that in. And it's sized it actually to the size of the canvas, that's good. And I'm going to click that tick. And that's going to resize it. Now again, here's our problem. Our problem is that it's on the top layer here, so we can't see anything below it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag this underneath. And you'll see there's a kind of there's a dark line up here on where I want to click, and I'll just let go, and that moves it. Okay, so we can now turn this one off and you can see the head from the other image there. That's looking good. So what I want to do is we need to kind of resize that. We need to put it in place um, so it's covering up the face that's not smiling quite so much. So let's come over 
and let's use this tool here. This is the Move tool. I'm just going to click it and I'm going to <laughs> select the right layer first. It's this one here. That's looking pretty good there. I've moved that over. Wonderful. Now sometimes if you need to, to resize it completely, maybe the head is too big or it's too small, we can edit. We can free transform. And we can change that to any size we need to. I'll just accept that there. That's looking okay there. So we can just see the change there. That's looking pretty good. So we've got, we've got a nice lovely change in our picture there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, put this into a format that I can then send that to to anybody in the family. Um, I can view on any PC. So I'm going to go to File and I'm going to export this. We need to export this as a JPEG. Now you'll see here, it's given us a quality of 75%. And, and to be fair, that's okay. That's okay because when you upload that to, to Facebook or Instagram or whatever, it's going gonna, it's gonna to shove that size down. So 75% should be fine. I'm just going to click on save. And there we go. We've got our file has just come down there and I can click on that. And there we are. There's our, there's our finished picture. We've combined two of our faces and we've still retained that old photograph look. Okay, so get in, have a look at your old photographs, see if you can combine them. Other ideas, you could make a collage out of your old photographs as well using the mask tool. Um, you could combine two ridiculous things to make some sort of funny art project, keep the family entertained. Um, this is so easy to do. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this and if there's any questions, uh, just pop them into the comments below uh, and we'll do our best to answer them. Okay, take care.